fun to be back outside on the porch. Bit blowy, but. A little bit blowy. <laughs> and there's some kids playing in the background. If you hear um, some happy shouting, that's what's going on. And Bear is eating the cat's food again. He's Bear, such a naughty rascal. boy. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. Anyway, it's been, um, it's been an interesting week for you and your family. Um, and we just remembered your mom's anniversary of her death and your sister Esther's. Yes. And on top of that, um, the birthday of your stepmom, Rosby. That's um, right. So all that comes together <laughs> at the end of September. And we, we thought um, it would be a good opportunity for Naran to tell you a little bit about her sister Esther and why it is that so many years after she passed, we still remember her yeah. and think about the impact of her life. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with my family story, my mother passed when I was just one, and she'd given, just given birth to her eighth child. I'm number seven from eight, and my father was a widower for a few years before remarrying Rosefeet, and she had two more children, and so there's ten of us all together. I, I, it's still a workout to put my head it around all that. It was such fun. And don't ask me to name them all in order. But <laughs> Esther was the fifth child, She's four years older than I am. And my older siblings who know her well um, remember that she was always the peacemaker being sort of the middle of the family. But she grew into this very lively, athletic, capable, hardworking, fun young lady. And the, her classmates, especially the boys, tell me that they would fight over what team she would play on. They all wanted her for the teams. Uh, they all wanted her for their camp craft excursions. Tomboy, yeah. Yep. She could light fires like nobody else. She could catch fish and put worms on hooks and do very tomboyish things. They loved her. She was also very um, energetic, very selfless and caring. And I know those are easy things to say after people pass, but these are true things about her. And I remember coming home, I was in first grade and it was a November afternoon and she was uncharacteristically lying on our, the couch in our family mm. home. And I said, Etty, Etty was what we all called her, what's going on? And she said, oh, we were playing a game and I think I sprained my knee. And um, of course we didn't know it then, but it wasn't a knee sprain, it was osteosarcoma, mm. um, which was quite advanced, and that was established in early January of 1983, and the only known treatment at that time was a leg amputation. And when the doctor told her, Esther, the only way we can possibly save your life is to amputate your leg, she said, thank you. And I remember my parents coming home and telling us that later and, and my mom crying when she told that story because she said my response would have been anger. So um, her leg was amputated the end of January and she just returned home from the hospital absolutely focused on getting over cancer. And she got a prosthesis leg and learned to walk. And like I said, she'd been very athletic so she learned to swim with one leg. Um, she would, when she was swimming, she would just hop around on one leg till she got to where she could swim and then she could swim beautifully. Um, she used a hand, um, propelled trike to get herself around. Uh, my mom had to redo all her clothes because her upper body muscles got so intense from her. You know, she was just so determined. Yeah. Um, and it was a marvel to watch her, um, recover, we thought. Suddenly then in July when she went to, uh, a doctor's appointment to get the, the her new leg sort of you know adjusted she had what turned out to be several massive um, cancer induced sort of heart attacks because the cancer had spread that far mm. and uh, they tried to save her life um, they thought she was gone several times but she made it through a surgery um, and they said she's she's going to die um, she won't make it home but my parents said well she's got this huge family all her siblings love her we need to bring her home so she can die there and they said well she'll probably die on the way home and they begged uh, and the doctor said okay and she came home and was in a coma for 14 days and then began to wake up again which was another miracle and um, regained a lot or some of what she had before, but it definitely wasn't, um, you know, all her mobility and strength again. But we had um, a few more months with her. She couldn't wait for the beginning of school. Um, 
and started that in early September, was devastated to realize when, when school began that she couldn't see properly. Mm. That September was very special for our family and my father took Esther for a walk every single morning to pick chicory flowers and my father um, had eyes the color of chicory <laughs> flowers and he would put the chicory flowers in Esther's very blonde hair and I remember her always coming home with, with chicory flowers. My grandfather, Arnold, who was from Birmingham, would sit by her bed and read. And her classmates, many of them boys, um, but boys and girls, would come and sit unabashedly by her bedside for hours and they would just stroke her hair, hold her hand. And her last wish was to go back to her childhood community in, in Pennsylvania. And she came back from that beautiful weekend, weekend excursion, yeah, refreshed in her spirit, but tired in her body. And she died the next morning, uh, the next Monday morning, wow. which happened to be the anniversary of our mother Hannah's passing, which was that just- That timing is just, it always- Unbelievable. Yeah, it makes me pause when you think of that. Yeah. Right? But her life, as yep. you described, you know, had a massive reach beyond your family. It sure um, did. Everybody who was in grade school with her remembers her um, and has been, you know, in some way changed and shaped by Esther. Um, I remember, though, even hearing that, you know, people, uh, inmates in prison, even one, one man on death row, yeah. learned of Esther and was, you know, yeah. touched to hear her story. So she, she, did, she did kingdom work in a very short space of time and in a very powerful kind of way. And again, it's, it's always nice to be able to say that when someone's not here, but Esther really did that. She did, and for our family, she is that ever-present angel hmm. watching over all of us and also taught, I think, each one of us again as if we needed to learn the lesson again, but, you know, the brevity of life and the importance to treasure each interaction with each other. The other remarkable part of the story is that the 20th of September is when we lost our mom and our sister, and the 21st of September is our mother, our stepmother, Rosefeet's birthday. So yeah. it's always a week for me where I, it's almost like Mother's Day, um, it's, it's, a, it's a mix of, of grief and celebration because I cannot imagine my life without rose feet. And while I would love, I can only imagine my life with Hannah, my biological mother, it wasn't meant to be, it didn't happen. Um, so it's a week of, yeah, a mixture of emotions, but a good one to remember what the most important things are in life. What, what would you say for you is the main legacy that Esther's left you when you think of your sister what immediately comes to mind and, and how, how, how does she change the way you are today? I think the main takeaway from her life for me was that life is very precious and very short and you mm. can't undo things that you wish you'd done differently because siblings you know tease are unfriendly to one another um, sometimes lie to each other you know, and, and I was only second grade and there, there are some regrets. And I, instead of internalizing those regrets as a negativity, I've really tried in my life to turn them into a positive, that, sure. I, that I don't leave things on well, the inside. Yeah, and you have I'm a story going. that you've often shared with your students. And I know it, you know, still in your adult heart, it um, stirs a little pang, but... Um, yeah, no, it's it's a good story, and I remember that I suddenly realized as Esther was getting sicker and sicker, she had more and more access to candy. Mm -hmm. Everyone was giving her candy, and um, in my little heart one day, I decided I would go into a room and steal some, and I, I remember um, propping up a little chair to get in her drawer where I thought the candy was, and sure enough, there was some gum, and I got it out, and suddenly she was at the door. And she said, Narani, what are you doing? And I said, nothing, but I'd pocketed the candy already by then. And then I kept thinking all that those next few weeks were sure I didn't know were the last weeks of her life that I should put that right, you know, mm. just say, sure. hey, I did steal for you. It, it bothered me. And I remember the last family hike, which turned out to be our last family walk together. Um, she even came near me and she gave you an opportunity. Gave me an opportunity um, <clears throat> to, you know, put it right. And I chose not to. And then I didn't realize she was dying, and then she was gone, and I still hadn't put that right. And 
I I don't I, you know I, I feel like I've put it right in my heart in the she's sense that you she's forgiven you yeah exactly it's a silly little thing yeah, but it's but a life lesson it's a life lesson yeah. and I never want to leave things unsaid or undone um, which is actually a characteristic of both my mother and my sister mm. and my stepmother. Um, they never left things unsaid that needed to be said, either a word of encouragement or a word of uh, apology, um, a word of humility, and or a word of or so- something to encourage somebody. So that's that's a, a lesson I'm going. I still try to carry forward, clumsily at mm. times, but try. <laughs> So we can well imagine that many of you have similar stories from people in your families, people you love. Uh, If you want to reach out and share them with us, we'd Mm -hmm. welcome that. Thank you to everybody who's subscribing. Uh, We welcome new viewers, so please join us in our conversations, and we'll talk again soon, but I hope this has been an encouragement to you. Talk soon.